Street and her Redeemer. Advent is about the past and the future. Our season of Advent calls us to look to the past and to the future. When we're called to look at the past, we meditate on the past. It calls us to look to the past and celebrate the first Advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in that celebration, we are called to remember probably the 33 best years this world has ever been because the glorious incarnation of our living God was here with us on this earth. His birth was the beginning of the end, an end which will be the perfection of this world, the perfection of an imperfect world upon his return. We celebrate because God so loves us that he sent his only son to suffer as one of us, to suffer for us, and we celebrate because he gave us the choice that by living for him and like him, we may have eternal life with him and the Father. Christmas proves to us that his love is the source of all that is good and joyful in this world. At the same time, we have to do a 180 degree turn, turn 180 degrees. And now we look to the future, that unknown time, that mystery, that date and time upon his return. But the Archdeacon so reminded us, I thought it was funny last, last week, last Sunday he reminded us of uh, so many vain and prideful people who are so foolishly ready to proclaim that they know and solve the mystery of when Christ will return. We look to the future in preparation for when he does return, a coming event of judgment and perfection. Judgment because in his return, he will bring a glorious light, the glorious light of his countenance. And it will abolish every shadow in this world. And it will abolish every shadow in men's hearts, including our own. Our own. That light will bring perfection. Perfection because his judgment will expose the good and the wicked. It will separate the wheat from the tares as he foretold in one of his many parables about his return. The wicked shall be cast down, and the good brought to perfection in the praise of God. St. Paul tells us this in his first letter to the Corinthians, our epistle. This is verse 5. This is from chapter 4. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then, and then shall every man have praise. God. We also, and we sometimes forget in the season of Advent, that we also have to look to the present. We have to look to today. We have to, we have to look at our lives with Christ today to remember that Advent when he first came into our lives. And for some of us, maybe when he returned, when we turned our back on him, when he came back. Our proper, our readings today, especially the collect and the epistle, is especially a reminder to us, to Archdeacon, to James, to myself, to every bishop, every preacher, every pastor, that we'll, we, we will be held to account our purpose, our calling, to make perfect, to bring us close to perfection, that we the people are able to stand before God upon his return. We are reminded that it is our duty prepare God's children to be found acceptable under his sight. And we do that by word and sacrament. Now today we are blessed to witness she's not in here. <laughs> I was going to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say it anyway. So, Lily, <laughs> um, we are blessed to witness, actually, we took part in uh, a baptism of Miss Lily this morning. She's our newer, newest sister in Christ. And she is now endowed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And she now is on her own journey, preparing for Christ's return with Christ's daily presence in her life. If you would pass on to her for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, basically, as Christians, and what we are to do is we simply need to love Jesus. That's how she needs to start, to love Jesus and to pray to him every day how much she loves him. She needs to study the catechism with her grandfather. She needs to obey her parents, her grandparents. And she needs to come to church every Sunday. And most of all, what she needs to be taught by us is that she shows the world the same love 
She says the people of this world, the same love that she has for Jesus. The more I think about it, that goes for the rest of them. <laughs> so that's what she needs to do. We must look to today to prepare for the future. Now, most of y'all know this. I know you do. But the church, constant prayer, God's holy word, and partaking of the Holy Eucharist is what guides us in our day-to-day -day decisions. It is who and what we are. And those are the gifts God gave us as ministers and stewards for you. You know, I heard of, uh, I just recently read a book, and it was a, it was a book about a young pastor, and, and part of the book was a young pastor was having lunch with a more senior pastor and more experienced. Um, and they were talking about what you, the challenges this young parish priest is going to come across as he uh, starts a parish. Now, this was in Rome. These were Roman priests. And uh, the older priest was saying, look, you know, look, you're going to find out that people are going to come running to you that don't come to church. They're what, what we call priesters. You know, priesters. They come for Christmas and Easter. <laughs> They're priesters. And, and he goes, the minute they have trouble in their life, the minute their life hits a brick wall, the first thing they're going to do is come to you. They are going to come to you. And he goes, when they, and, and he gave an example. He goes, it happens to me all the time. I don't see them all year except maybe two days if I'm lucky. They never come, you know, they never come to confession, any of that. He goes, but they have trouble in their life and they come to me. And of course, I will pray for them. Of course, I will pray with them. He goes, but the minute I tell them that they need to come back to church and partake of the Holy Sacraments, they look at me like I'm crazy for suggesting that they actually practice their faith. <laughs> they participate in their faith. And um, he said, you know, it, it, what he talked about was, is he goes, our world right now is so um, immediate results, instant satisfaction, the dynamic thing. We want the, we want the powerful and the dynamic. And he said, you know, I wouldn't, I, he goes, I would believe that if I told them, instead of coming to church, to go stand in their lawn and wave a dead chicken over their head and everything in their life would be okay. He goes, I think they'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> As servants of Christ, we must give you what Christ compels us to give you. It's not from us. It's from God. We, as your shepherds who love you deeply, give you only the things that Christ gave to us to matter unto you. We are nothing without him. It is only by his will that we wear these collars. And it is only with the help of your prayers that we continue to do so. We talked about this in... in um, we talked about this in uh, our Bible study this morning. We're studying in Matthew. And I can tell you this, beware. Beware of anyone who claims to have the knowledge of God. Because they are not faithful to you. They're faithful to themselves. And beware. We talked about this. Beware of the temptation of just spirituality, spiritual Christianity without the church. It's the easy path. And that's the path Satan wants us to take. It's the easy path. Be, beware of the temptation of you've been baptized, you're done. You're baptized. You've been saved. Once saved, always saved. That is the devil's trickery. That is his evil to trick you, saying, you can sin. <laughs> and most of all, beware. C.S. Lewis wrote this. Beware of this. Beware of Satan's most powerful, most powerful weapon. And C.S. Lewis said it best. His most powerful weapon is when he convinces us he doesn't exist. It is God at Sunday. Rejoice Sunday. Thus the rose color. Rejoice, rejoice. And we have a wonderful reason to today with the baptism of Lily. And we need to live each and every day rejoicing of the arrival of Christ in our lives and the love that surrounds us, his love that surrounds us. Rejoice in that he gave us his church. He gave us his ministers, his holy word, and in the sacraments to sustain us and to prepare us. To help us live in his likeness and show the world the same kind of love and charity he shows us. That each and every day we have these gifts of grace and are endowed by them, by God, through his son Christ. And by faith in his merciful love for us, we will stand acceptable before him upon his return. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray.
Grant, oh, grant, O oh, Almighty God, that as thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ, at his advent, came to seek and save that which was lost, so at his second and glorious appearing, he may find us the fruits of the redemption which he wrought. Let us rejoice in he who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.